So we've been talking about this for a while, and many of you have been hearing us for a while. Esther certainly has been hearing it for a long while. And she said to Jerry the other day, you know, it's interesting how in all of this that I've been hearing, I realize that I've still been counting on my action for far more than I meant to. Because in many cases, I don't really have to line up with my vortex because I've got people who can just bang it into place. I'll just call someone and say, this is out of whack. Can you, can you take care of it? And they do. They're really good at wrestling things to the ground. But in the process of that, Esther realizes that she doesn't move her vibration. She just calls someone and they wrestle something else to the ground. And then, and then she realizes that sometimes she can create more brush fires than she has brush fire put her outers. And then a sort of clarity is beginning to occur to many of you. We've been talking about this vortex. You get it, don't you? Conceptually, it's an idea that you can wrap your thoughts around. And we've been letting you know that there is potentially a vibrational gap between who you really are, which is the done deal, the vibrational doneness. It's done, it's done, it's done. And what you have so far allowed to manifest because of what's going on vibrationally. And Esther said to Jerry the other day, you know, I realized that I've loved the idea of the vortex and I have wanted to be in it as much as I can. So I have been approaching my reality by trying to think the thoughts that make me align with my vortex. Makes sense. Look for things to appreciate, look for things to bask about. If I find myself feeling negative about something, pivot from it, say to myself, I know what I don't want, what is it that I do want? Which is a logical approach to lining up with your vortex. But Esther said, this last week or so, it has flipped for me because now I get it that if I let the vortex and what it means and how it feels be all that I'm thinking about, then in establishing my relationship with the vortex, and every day I'm in it, many, 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 many times, if I milk my vortex when I'm in it, if I keep it going when I'm there, if I find myself on a happy thought and I rampage it longer, if I let my vortex be my undivided intention, if I let my vortex be what I'm reaching for, I now get it, she said, that my vortex affects my manifestation. It's a different way of approaching it. In other words, what we want you to gather as a result of the conversation that we're having here today and as a result of what's going to go on in your lives in the next hours and days and weeks as a result of what you pick up from this leading edge conversation, what you're going to come to know is that you have complete control over every manifestation that happens in your life if you approach it from inside the vortex, for example. So something happens, maybe someone walks into your experience and they don't jive with you in the way you would like them to. They're annoying in some way or they're unknowledgeable in some way or they're belligerent in some way. They're abusing someone in some way. It doesn't matter. You witnessed it and you're having a knee-jerk response to it. And as you're having this negative emotion, the reason you're having the negative emotion is because you're responding to it in the way that you are. And if you feel negative emotion, it means that your inner being is, in, is responding to it in an entirely different way. In other words, what you're feeling isn't about what you've witnessed. It's about your relationship with the larger part of you who's having a different experience. Can you hear that? Because who you really are is loving this obnoxious person, even though you are not. And so the rift that you've got going on is the separation is too strong of word between who you really are and who you're being. So that's a manifestation that happened. This is the thing that we want you to realize. That person walked into your life and you experienced that manifestation. When we talk about manifestations, we know you think we're talking about cars and empires and legacies and books and relationships and all those pinnacle sort of things that you have been thinking of in terms of goals that you're reaching for. 
But we want you to understand that what manifestations are, what we really mean by manifestation, manifestation is what's happening now. This is a manifestation. This room, these lights, these screens, this sound, this people, this global audience. This is a manifestation that's happening right here and now. Your relationship with your chair, your relationship with the people you're sitting next to. This is a manifestation, 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 manifestation. It's happening now, 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 now. Manifestation, manifestation, manifestation. So everything that is happening around you is a manifestation that is evidence of one thing and one thing only. Your relationship with your vortex your relationship with your vortex. So the fact that this annoying person is there or this belligerent person is there is your manifestation, which is simply reflecting back to you, your relationship with your vortex, that's all. And that's what's so interesting. Esther nearly fell off the bed and then the chair and then the car and then the bed and then the chair and then the car. As, she, as these processes have been going through her mind, the thought processes, as she realizes that everything that's happening is a reflection of only one thing, her relationship with the vortex. So, for example, Esther said to Jerry, if I were to do something for you kitchen-wise, in my beautiful new kitchen, what would you like it to be? And Jerry said, I would like oatmeal and raisin cookies. And Esther said, consider it done. So she went to the kitchen, snatched everything out of the cupboard, except baking soda, which was not there, because she has never baked in this kitchen before. <laughs> and so she said to Jerry, I'm on the hunt for baking soda. And Jerry said, you know, I think I saw some in the refrigerator at the guest house because Sylvia has freshened everything and I think it's in there, like a freshener thing. So Esther said, I'm on it. So she jumped in the car. Now their garage is carpeted, which is a little tricky because on three occasions, Jerry has ended up at a restaurant with no shoes on. <laughs> because it just feels logical to get in the car from the car. So now Esther jumps in the car, goes through a gate or two, goes to the guest house, steps out into the gravel in her stocking feet and says right out loud, can someone please explain to me why I'm here in my stocking feet? And then she tiptoes down the pathway into the cottage and thinks to herself, Surely there are a pair of shoes or carpet slippers in the closet. So she walks into the closet and finds herself in very wet carpet. She calls Fidel and he tells her as, as he examines it that the air conditioner, no one's been in the cottage for a long time, the air conditioner has been running, it's plugged up and it is draining into the closet. And Esther is saying, now no one needs to tell me why I'm here in my stocking feet. In other words, a manifestation, a path of least resistance. Jerry wants cookies. He wants the kind of cookies that don't have the baking soda. The baking soda isn't in the house, but the baking soda is at the cottage. Esther goes in her stocking feet. Now, you might say coincidence. You might say, oh, that's one way to twist a really stupid story into something meaningful. <laughs> But what it is, is the path of least resistance manifestation because things are always working out for you. You see, things are always working out for you. So as you take that as a manifestation, Esther could not get back over to the house to Jer tell Jerry fast enough. She wasn't even upset that the house smelled funky or that the carpet was wet or that she didn't know what the problem was. She was exhilarated that the universe had delivered to her an answer to a problem she did not even know she had because things are always working out for her. You get what we're talking about. Manifestations, manifestations. So if you are feeling worried about something, what you're going to receive back as feedback from specialists, from anybody that knows, is information that doesn't have anything to do with your reality, doesn't have anything to do with your expected manifestational reality, doesn't have anything to do with anything except it's feedback to how you're feeling. It's feedback to how you're feeling. You say, oh, this test or this x-ray or this conversation or this whatever is coming to me is a 
statement of fact and we say we'll give you that but it's a statement of only one fact your vibrational proximity to your vortex period end of story so what we want you to begin to watch for and it will be fun for you to watch is that if you will hear us when we say that you have the ability to develop a personal and deliberate relationship with your vortex with your inner being with the larger part of you with good feeling emotions and if you will practice the vibration of it as often as you can and milk it milk it milk it when you find yourself there so that you become so familiar with the feeling of who you really are that you will see right before your eyes manifestations reflecting where you are personalities of people that you know will shift events that have been moving in one direction will shift you have control you are the creator of your own experience because you are the creator of your relationship with your vortex and when you get that people will say to you what's going on with you why is it that you defy the odds and you defy the logic and and you turn heads wherever you go and things always work out for you no matter what and you say or maybe you don't because some of them are ready to hear it and some of them are not ready to hear it I am the creator of the manifestation that comes to me and I can control what happens to me in traffic I can control where I am when the weather is doing whatever it's doing I can control the relationship that I have with airline flights I can control the relationship that I have with my physical apparatus I can control my relationship with my children and with strangers and with family 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 I can control my relationship with family because I don't have to control what they think or what they know or what they do I have one very simple task I know that who I really am exists as a loving expansive expanding eternal being and that that part of me is the largest reality that exists and I have access to the awareness of my relationship with that and now I've got that down down everything in my experience is not just working out for me eventually it's working out for me now 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 